firstly I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay my respect to their elders past and present. I've got three messages today, three points. One, we're being kept in the dark. This includes your council. This project was announced four weeks before Christmas. Minimalist detail. We've continued to ask and we're continually refused by the, from the government and their authority to tell us exactly what their plan is. We are being kept in the dark. Property owners under acquisition are being ticked off one at a time. There was an original list went out, there's a subsequent list, and people on a daily basis are being contacted. We don't know which streets are being closed. For council to put in a submission, we've had to make assumptions. We don't know. How can you put in a submission about a project when you don't know what it entails? There's no traffic modelling to show us what is going to be the improved outcome. That, is that because it is going to be traffic chaos and gridlock in Ashfield for the next five, six, seven years? Are we certain that stage three is ever going to happen? Because that depends on the usage and you know the history of tunnels in this city. This city. This proposal does not meet the object objectives set out in the documentation. So you need to get active. If you want to change this project, you need to get active. Remember the people with the M5 changed things in that project when they got active. Thank you everybody for coming today. I don't know about you, but I love this park. Who loves this park? Yeah. Now, we don't want West Connect to turn Asheville Park into a construction zone. They've told us that they want to take 10 to 20 metres off the bottom of this park to widen Parramatta Road. And later on, we're going to see that we're going to lose some of the beautiful trees in this park. West Connects also told Asheville Council late last year that they may want to use part of this park as a depot, as a place to put uh, machinery and equipment. This will trash the park, basically. It's a heritage listed park and it's on the register of the National Trust and it shouldn't be happening here. This park is so incredibly well used by a diverse range of organisations and local residents. So we want to save Ashfield Park. Okay, I wasn't expecting a clap. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, sorry? Thank you, I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple of reasons why I came here this afternoon. Uh, and no, I, I can't give ironclad uh, guarantees because I'm not paid enough, uh, apparently, in the state government. Uh, decisions about the West Connex are made well above uh, my pay grade, as they say. But there are a couple of things I'd like to share with you. Um, one of the reasons for being here uh, this afternoon is that I've had about 12 to 15 odd meetings with community groups talking about the West Connex over the last uh, eight or nine weeks. And those community groups that come to see me are about uh, 12, 15 to 20 people. They come and have a chat to me, sometimes in my office, sometimes uh, in their neighbourhoods, next to their homes. And I find that to be the most productive environment for having serious dialogues about some of the legitimate concerns that people have. Now, this is a rally. So I'm not going to try and debate or engage you in conversation, but simply to extend an invitation to any of you, either individually as family uh, groups or in neighbourhood groups, to come and see me in my office or ring my office. I'll come out and talk to you in a small gathering looking at your specific issues in, that uh, specifically um, affect you and your local community. So that's my... Um, that's I've been challenged to give an assurance that Ashfield Park will not be used as a construction staging area. Yep, is that what the challenge was? Well, I've seen, I've seen three bits of correspondence, one directly to Council from the West Connex Delivery Authority, from the Chief Executive, saying that there are no plans to use Ashfield as a construction staging area. Now, the Premier, I'm not here representing the West Connex Delivery Authority. I'm here as a local member who has a bit of experience in managing New South Wales roads. For about four years leading up to the Olympic Games, I actually looked after the roads of New South Wales. I know what traffic congestion does to local communities. When I have a look at West Connex, I don't look at the business case. I look at all of the arguments that have been put forward for the West Connex because in the Strathfield electorate, 
There are only three issues that drive people's lives, I can assure you. People tell me. Not, not me. People tell me. It is traffic congestion, it is traffic congestion, and it is roads. And they talk about safety and amenity and utility and access of their local neighbourhoods. So when I stand up and support a project, regardless of what it is, I don't do it because I've read a business case, I do it because I understand the challenge in our community and given my experience in managing roads in New South Wales, I think I have an understanding of what needs to be done to try and, and uh, deal with it. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I think my three minutes are up. I invite you to please come to my office, make contact with me, more than happy to talk to you in detail about the things that affect you. Have uh, well, good afternoon. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, Sorry. the Gadigal and Wongal people of the Ora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. The fact is that this will be the most expensive development project, in fact, that Australia has seen, and it will be a $15 billion traffic jam. That's what this project will be delivering. This is the triumph, the triumph of finance, infrastructure companies and the development industry over good traffic planning and a proper strategy for the future of Sydney. The truth is that this development threatens a sustainable, livable Sydney. It threatens people's homes. It threatens our park here. It threatens the future of funding public transport in the future. And the pollution stacks threaten the health of every person here. Yes, yes, yes. This is the result of an historic battle between Transport for New South Wales, the state government body, and the government's uh, front group for the development industry, Infrastructure New South Wales, headed by Nick Greiner, the former chairman of Lendlease Infrastructure, one of the biggest infrastructure companies in Australia. And what we saw from Infrastructure New South Wales was plans which were put to the government. When the government was elected, they said, oh, we can't trust the people in the department. We have to set up this new organisation called Infrastructure New South Wales. And their plan called for West Connects. It called for massive infrastructure uh, development throughout Sydney. And of course, it calls, called for what they call the activation of this network, which means huge benefits and landfall profits to developers oh. all along the route of Parramatta Road oh. and throughout New South Wales. And the legacy of that, uh, we are seeing today. Because Infrastructure New South Wales Chairman and CEO resigned uh, some time ago last year, and most of their plans were thrown in the garbage where they belonged. But the West Connex plan continues because the politicians announced they thought it was a great idea, and now we're having this catch-up game where people are trying to work out in the government how are we going to pay for this, how are we going to build this, and there's a reason why we haven't seen the traffic modelling. There's a reason why there is such incredible secrecy. is because they know if they release the technical details, rallies like this wouldn't have several hundred, they'd have several thousands. Because the joke, the fallacy, the fallacy behind this entire program will only be re revealed when the full business case is exposed. When the traffic modelling is for us to see, and if people like Charles, who when he sees a problem, sees a road, thinks that the solution is with West Connex, well, let's see the evidence. If the government is so confident about their modelling and so confident about the traffic planning, why the secrecy? And the fact is that they know that if they reveal this, there will be uproar. The only people cheering at the moment are the big infrastructure companies, are the developers, and banks like Macquarie Bank. Not local communities, <laughs> not local residents, not local commuters. Because if you're travelling on this West Connex, you'll be paying up to $14 for the pleasure because we know that there is a whole range, a whole range of affordable, community-friendly transport options that are available. I'll just give you a quick... It's time for the local members, like Charles, to come out and stand with their community against the government and say, quite simply, that this three-lane motorway will, can carry 7,200 people. A one-lane light rail can carry 7,500 people, up to 15,000 light rail people in an hour. The rail line over there can carry up to 108,000 people an hour with modern signalling. It would take a 90-lane motorway to do what that six-lane railway does. That six-lane railway over there is the most important transport corridor in this city if it is cheaper and easier to catch a train. That is why 80% of the people from Penrith 
catch a train. Now, the government talks about travel time savings, about 40 minutes to the airport. It will be slower to drive on the West Connects using the government's own figures to get to the airport, to get to the city. They say it will take 90 minutes to get from Penrith to the CBD. It takes 60 minutes by the train now. Think about that, $15 billion, pollution stacks, the loss of this park, the loss of Sydney Park, the loss of the Tempe wetlands, devastation to Concord Park, widening through Homebush, and 100,000 apartments, 12 story apartment towers at Great North Road is what they drew in their artist impressions. And all of this, just so the people who have consulted on the West Connects, Macquarie Bank and Leighton's and the other big construction companies can make big profits from our suburbs. Now we've defeated this before. 